Well, good evening, everyone. How are you? It's lovely to see you again and a very warm welcome back to What's For Tea. And as usual, if you're new, a warm welcome to you also. This is What's For Tea. And my name is Cheryl. And for tea tonight, I made this amazingly tender slow cooker rump steaks with vegetables in the slow cooker. Now, I popped this on around about 11 o'clock this morning, just as I was going out to work. And I came in from work, I got changed changed and done all the bits and I served this at seven o'clock so it was in there for eight hours and you do want to give this one as long as you possibly can the longer you leave it in there the better it's going to be you know your meat is going to be wonderfully tender this is just one of these things you do want to cook for as long and slow as you possibly can but it's absolutely delicious and absolutely simple and foolproof that's why i love slow cooker recipes right so this is what i've got or this is what i used this morning if you want to follow along with me but as usual everything will be in the description box down below as well and you only need a handful of ingredients. So the first thing I've got there is just basically some salt and, you know, full black peppercorns. I've also got a tablespoon of Henderson's relish. Now, if you don't have Henderson's relish, just use Worcestershire sauce. You know, it's basically the same thing. I've also got a handful of Chantenay carrots or baby carrots, but use whatever carrots you want. And I've also got some baby potatoes. I'm just using two per person because there actually there were three of us for tea tonight so I used two per person so I used six potatoes. I've also got 200 ml of beef stock now that's just an oxo cube mixed in with water and I've also got three rump steaks I've got one small onion and that is it that's all you're going to need guys so let's move over and we'll show you what we're doing next. So this is my Henderson's relish, but like I said, if you don't have this, just use Worcestershire sauce. And I'm using rump steak, but again, you can use whatever steak you like. I just like using these kind of steaks. I'm going to be cooking them for a long, long time because they're quite robust, you know. So first thing I'm going to do is chop up my onion. Now you want this fairly small because this is going to, you know, fall into your gravy. So you don't want great big chunks of onion swimming around in your gravy. So this was fine for me. And like I said, these are the carrots that I'm using. These are just wee baby Chantenay carrots. And I use, you know, three or four per person. Because I'm also going to be doing cabbage. So we don't need too many carrots. So I'm just going to chop the tops off of these and give them a quick scrape with a peeler. But if I wasn't having cabbage, you know, I would use more carrots. So this was mine done. You just want to set your slow cooker to low and it's going to be on for about eight or nine hours. So first thing you want to do is grab yourself a frying pan, pop some olive oil in and you just want to get that up to a nice high heat. Pop your steaks in and you just want to sear these on each side. That's going to lock all of your juices in, you know, and they're going to be lovely and flavoursome and tender as a result. So just give them a, a few minutes or a couple of minutes on each side. And this was ideal for me. I was happy with this. Then you want to go over to your slow cooker. The first thing I'm going to do is pop in my steaks directly in to the bottom. Like I said, there are three of us for tea tonight, so I've got three steaks. But if there's more of you, I mean, you could pop another one in. Just depends on the size of your slow cooker. Just make sure you've got all the wee drippings from your pan in there as well. Then I'm going to pop in my potatoes, just give them a wee wash. Now I'm using quite small potatoes, but if yours are any bigger, I would actually slice them through the middle just to make sure they cook properly. And the same with the carrots. As you can see, my carrots are quite small. But if you're using chunkier, you know, chunkier carrots, I would give them a wee slice through the middle. Although I don't mind my carrots with a wee bit of crunch. And then your onions on top. Your onions will help tenderise your meat as well. And then your salt and black peppercorns and then your Henderson's relish or your Worcester sauce, whatever you're using. And then your beef stock on top. And that's it. Simple. So I'm going to leave this. Like I said, I left mine for eight hours. So the longer, the better. Nine hours if you've got time, you know, leave it for nine, that would be ideal. But I left mine on for eight. And like I said, we're going to be having some cabbage as well. 
So this was me after eight hours. Now you just want to poke a knife into your potatoes and make sure they're cooked. You know, make sure your meat is nice and tender. This was basically falling apart. I could feel it, you know, when I was using the tongs. I was trying to be very careful. I was actually going to scoop the other two from underneath, but I didn't want to take the chance. And the potatoes are nice and soft as well. Like I said, my potatoes are quite small. My carrots are quite small. So mine were lovely and soft. But if yours are any bigger, I would slice them through the middle. So all you have to do now is pop it out into a plate. And as you can see, that's just falling apart. So we had a couple of potatoes, a few carrots, and then that lovely buttered cabbage. I just boil my cabbage, put a wee bit of, you know, salt, butter and pepper through it. And it's lovely. A wee bit of that gravy as well. Now, I didn't actually thicken the gravy up, but you can, of course, thicken your gravy up if you like with a wee bit of thickener. Just add it into your slow cooker. Or you can just put everything through a sieve, you know, if you just want a nice smooth gravy. But I like the wee chunky bits of onion. And I just thought I would show you here. It's cooked perfectly. This is just how we like it. It's actually hard to actually show you, you know, how tender this was, but I'm going to, I'm going to try. Because these are the kind of things that I like to see, you know, if I'm watching a recipe or something. So as you can see, it's just shredding apart there. And it was delicious, guys. It really was. Like I said, I use rump steaks because they are quite a robust steak, so they can stand the long cooking time. But definitely low and slow is the way to go. You know, if you've got longer, I would be quite happy giving these nine hours. But I just, you know, gave it eight and they were absolutely fine. So, yeah. So that was it. Very quick, very easy, very simple, but absolutely delicious and perfect for these colder months that are coming up. So I've got my wee giveaway on Sunday. So good luck to those of you who have entered. The giveaway is now closed. It closed today. So I'll be picking a winner. And I'll add that on just to the end of Meals of the Week on Sunday. And coming up tomorrow, I've got the wee shopping haul. Now, I don't know where we're going yet. It might be Asda, it might be Tesco or Lidl or Aldi. Haven't decided yet. I don't know. It really will depend on where I am tomorrow. So hopefully you'll join me tomorrow for the wee shopping haul. And then on Sunday for Meals of the Week is probably when I'm going to see you next. So like I said, guys, thank you ever so much for popping back just to check out this wee simple recipe and do let me know if you're planning giving it a go but my best advice is the longer you can give it the better because I really don't want you being disappointed saying oh my veggies aren't cooked or my meat's tough you know because you haven't given it long enough you do really the minimum of eight hours if you're going to put you know if you're going to cook it on low so until I see you next time guys mind to take care of yourselves and from our house in Scotland to wherever you are in the world, lots of love and bye for now. Bye now.